It's finally happening. I'm testing two of the newest ultra high performance tires on the market, the Michelin Pilot Sport 5 and the Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 6 against seven of their key rivals, including tires from Bridgestone Continental, Hankook and Yokohama. Before I start the testing, which is going to be as thorough as ever and cover all the important dry, wet, noise, comfort and rolling resistance tests, I just want to quickly talk about the tyres in the test. I'm testing in the popular 225-45 17-inch tyre size, which means I couldn't get the Pirelli P0. I also couldn't get the brand new Falcon, the FK520, so I don't have the FK510 in the test. The other thing worth noting, I'm going to go pick it up to prove a point. Sometimes we speak with tyre manufacturers about what tyres they want included in the test. So as always, I sent out emails to the main premium manufacturers, including Bridgestone, saying I'm doing a 17-inch test with a Golf GTI against the Pilot Sport 5 and the Goodyear Eagle F1A Symmetric 6. I'd really love the Potenza Sport in the test. They said, yeah, no problem. We'll send you some tyres for the test because we need 10 of each and logistically and cost-wise it can be quite difficult. And they sent the Torenza T005, their premium touring tyre. Not entirely sure why, but it does give us an interesting benchmark. The Torenza T005 is an excellent touring tire, but I wanna show you something. I don't know if it'll be quite visible on camera, but this is the sidewall. I can quite easily deflect it with my thumbs. This is the Goodyear, the same double the pressure, the same amount of pressure gets almost no movement. Whereas the Torenza, the sidewall squishes, and this thing is significantly lighter. These are some of the differences between an ultra high performance tire designed to be good at handling and a touring tire which is designed more for comfort, low noise and rolling resistance. So although I am sad we don't have the Potenza Sport in the test, I'm actually quite interested to see how this does. Anyway, now I've said all that, let's go get testing. I am going to start with dry handling because these are ultra high performance tires. Let's face it, we all care exactly how they feel in the dry. There were only two tyres in the 94 second range and that was the Rotella and the Semprit. The Rotella was slightly ahead on time, but the Semprit was slightly nicer to drive. Both these tyres did have quite a lot of understeer. You'd turn in and then you'd be waiting and you'd be waiting, then you couldn't get on the throttle and they just had limited grip and feedback. I'm sure they'll be comfortable tyres when we get around to comfort testing, but in dry handling they weren't the best. Next up were Bridgestone and Hankook. Now, I have already said I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't have the Potenza Sport and Bridgestone sent the T005, but it did give me a really interesting game to play while doing dry handling, and that was guess the Bridgestone, guess which the premium touring tyre is in a group of Volt Drive performance tyres, and I thought this was going to be easy. In fact, I thought I'd nailed it, because I test blind, I don't know, and after testing the Hankook, I was all happy, I was like, this is definitely the Bridgestone. The steering is soft compared to the other tyres I've run so far. There was loads of understeer. It seemed to have vague feedback. The grip was fine, especially on the brakes, uh, but I just like, this is the premium touring tyre. And then it just so happened to be the next tyre in sequence was the Bridgestone. I was like, ha, huh, this is more Bridgestone than the Bridgestone. What, what's going on? So when I worked everything out, I worked out it was the Hankook, then the Bridgestone. Both these tyres, in particular the Bridgestone, you could tell as soon as I was reversing out of the garage after the wheel change, the car just feels like it, I don't know how to describe it, just like it moves a little bit as on the tire, like the whole car sort of rocks around a little bit on the sidewall. And that goes on into the handling lap. The Bridgestone especially, it was easily the tire with the most understeer. Uh, you couldn't really attack the corners, the steering was light, it offered very little feedback, even compared to the lesser good ultra high performance tyres, the steering was really, really numb and you needed a lot of steering angle to turn. So, although, again, it's sad it's not a Potenza Sport, but it's been a really interesting like comparison, finding out, I, I've enjoyed it. The GT was in fifth place and probably the first tyre I would actually allow to be called an ultra high performance tyre because the steering was nice and direct, it weighted up nicely, it was linear, there wasn't a huge amount of delay as the tyre obtained slip angle and sat on the sidewall. It was an enjoyable tyre to drive. It just didn't quite have the grip of the very, very best, but it's not quite as expensive as the very, very best. So like, I enjoy driving on the GT. Prepare your shocked face, for in fourth place was the Michelin Pilot Sport 5. Now this was only 1.28 seconds off the very best and had fantastic levels of grip, but it seemed to pick up exactly where the Pilot Sport 4 less was off. It just had that slightly numb, slightly slow to steer, 
lacking feedback steering that I don't think an ultra high performance tyre should have. I'm not saying it's not a good tyre. It had buckets of grip. It just kind of, in a group of tyres, it wasn't as bad as the Bridgestone, obviously. Wasn't as undynamic as the Hankook, but it wasn't up there at the sharp end, which I'd really hoped the Pilot Sport 5 would improve on on the four, but it feels overall very similar. One tyre that definitely deserved the word sport in its name was the Yokohama Advanced Sport V105. Now, this is an old tyre. It's already been replaced by the V107. I'm only testing it because every single time I do a tyre test, you guys ask me to test it, but I'm glad I have. It's been a long time since I've driven on this tyre, and this is the first time I've driven it in a test, but in the dry, really enjoyable tyre. Up there with the very best, the very sharpest and sportiest feeling. It, the loads build up nicely and I yeah I'm, I'm sad I haven't had it in a test sooner I have always tried to get Yokohama in this tire in a test it hasn't come round I'm glad I have this time because it was a fun tire to drive in the dry Goodyear managed an impressive second place overall in dry handling with again some of the best steering it wasn't quite up there with the Yokohama but it was very nice compared to the Michelin which I know you're all interested about these are the two tires everyone's comparing it was quicker it was sharper it gave you more feedback it loaded up quicker and it just felt more sporty the grip was excellent it was only two tenths off the very fastest on average and it had the quickest one lap pace the tire felt like a monster on the brakes and it's just another really good product the asymmetric five was always up there as one of the best in the dry and the asymmetric six is still there so i'm really happy about that where a lot of tire companies are making their tires feel softer and less sporty good your answer thank you very much but the fastest tire on test and the most sporty feeling by a small margin over the Yokohama was once again, ironically, one of the only tyres without Sport or Race or F1 or whatever in its name. It was the Continental Premium Contact 6. Obviously not the Sport Contact 7 because that doesn't come in this tyre size in 17 inch. And personally, I don't think the Sport Contact 7 goes against tyres like the Asymmetric 6 and the Pilot Sport 5. I think it's natural rivalries tyres like the Pilot Sport 4S. So that's why my other test have both of those in. But the tyre, again, I knew on the way to the track and as I got onto track, it confirmed it. The tyre just loads up super quickly. It was perhaps lacking a tiny bit of detail mid corner exit, but I think that's more down to the Golf 8 than anything else. But other than that, Again, I'm glad I test blind, so I don't know what I'm driving on, but every time I test this tire, it's my favorite or one of my favorites in the dry. And honestly, if you're looking for a tire to make your sports car feel sporty, it's this or the Yokohama. But if you're looking for a tire with buckets of grip and a lovely, easy to drive understeer balance, then it's the Michelin. Different tires for different people, and that's okay. Goodyear flexed its dry grip further in the braking test, leading Hankook and Michelin by an impressive margin, with the Rotella struggling to slow the car. As wet handling is such an important uh, category for a tyre, because wet grip is really where a tyre makes the difference, I actually ran wet handling twice, once in a Golf 8 GTI, which is this car, and again in reverse order on a Golf 7 GTI. Because I had a little bit of spare time, I thought, why not? And the Golf 7's a better car. Luckily, there were almost no inversions, apart from when the times were separated by hundreds of a second. We'll get to that a bit later on. The slowest tire was once again the Rotella, proving once again, and I say it so often, cheap tires are cheap for a reason. Now, they do seem to get better every time I test them, because this tire wasn't drastically bad, but it did have a lot of understeer, and it felt really long on the brake. So let's hear how that goes in wet braking. Next up was GT. Now this was well ahead of the Rotella and just 2.2% off the best. So you can see things are really close now amongst the best tires on test. This tire, again, like in the dry, had some sporty handling. It was enjoyable to drive, had no issues with aquaplaning. So I'm assuming it's gonna do very well in the aquaplaning test, but it did lack some grip. It felt better laterally than it did on the brakes. Uh, again, we'll see in the braking test how that rounds out, but fun tire to drive I just i just wish it had a bit more braking as in last year's test the continental premium contact six did struggle a little bit in the wet as did the yokohama but they were just two percent off the best 
Like last year, the Continental skipped around with a little bit too much lateral aquaplaning, which is aquaplaning when you're turning, which meant, because it's lateral aquaplaning, not straight aquaplaning, sometimes just kick the car out. So you were a little bit nervous. Wasn't quite as bad as last year on the 18 inch tire, but it's still definitely a weakness of the Continental, although it did feel good on the brakes. The Yokohama, like in the dry and like the Continental did, uh, nice and sporty to drive. The Yokohama didn't seem to aquaplane as much, but it just didn't quite have the grip laterally. But again, both these tires were fine. Nothing like drastically bad about them, but it's just better tires and test. And this is a very stacked group. Fifth and fourth with a Hankook and Bridgestone pair. And if you like understeer, these are your tires. They seem to sit very closely. And in the dry, that made sense. In the wet, they did feel a little bit different. Both were easy to drive with loads of, lots of understeer. I'm pretty much going in a straight line to demonstrate understeer while turning. But that meant you didn't feel, you weren't worried about the lap. It just wasn't that sporty. The Bridgestone struggled more on the brakes. The Hankook felt monstrous on the brakes. But the Hankook seemed, over the four laps, to get a little bit slower each lap. As it got warmer, the tire just seemed to struggle a little bit more. So its average was brought down. So it had fastest one lap pace than the Bridgestone, but was slower over the run. The Semprit might have struggled in the dry, but it was exceptional in the wet loads of grip especially laterally absolutely no problems anywhere in the circuit with any sort of aquaplaning which meant its time was good and it was just an easy soft steering i guess it felt quite a bit like the bridgestone and hankook again and i'm assuming when i do comfort these are the three tires that are going to feel the most comfortable because they've got the softest handling but yeah just nice and easy to drive with good levels of grip Semprit, if you didn't know is a sister brand to Uniroyal in Europe, which are both run by Continental. And this tire, the Semprit, does remind me a lot of the Uniroyal Range Sport 5. It's just one of those tires, good in the wet, good levels of comfort, good aquaplaning resistance, but has struggled in the dry. Now, the fastest two tires around wet handling, who'd have thought it's Michelin and Goodyear? Now, remember when I said I ran on both a Golf 8 and a Golf 7? and the order was essentially exactly the same, apart from when the times were very, very close. This is when they were close between these two tires. The Michelin was slightly faster on the Golf 8. The Goodyear was slightly faster on the Golf 7. Both tires had exceptional grip in the wet, but they delivered it again in completely different ways. They both felt outstanding on the brakes and they both felt outstanding laterally. I'd probably say the Goodyear was, had a little bit more in terms of outright grip and was definitely the more sporty of the tide, more direct, gave you more feedback, but it also aquaplaned quite a bit more, which meant at points you couldn't be, you couldn't progress through the corner on the power, on the brakes because you were floating. That's what aquaplaning is. The Michelin wasn't as sporty to drive, wasn't as dynamic, but it was up there with the Semper. It was just so easy to drive and so predictable and so graceful and had almost no issues with aquaplaning. In fact, I don't think it had any issues with aquaplaning. So there we have the two tires again, performing incredibly closely, but in different ways. And across two different cars and two different times of day and eight different laps, it's incredible that everything is this close. But I love tire testing. This is why I love tire testing because smallest things objectively the smallest differences in time can still be quite vast subjectively and that, that's the differences between the tires hankook's wet braking advantage over the rest of the group was as large as ever with continental michelin and goodyear being the best of the rest the new michelin pilot sport 5 had a very impressive straight aquaplaning result given its high levels of grip in the dry and wet with the goodyear and bridgestone struggling in the deeper water now that I've had some time to calm down after the excitement of handling, here's the data from the final few tests I've not yet spoken about. The Goodyear had the lowest pass by noise of the group, with the Rotella and GT also performing very well. I'm a little bit surprised at the Bridgestone being the noisiest of the group, given its category, but we tested noise at two speeds and it was the noisiest both times. I did get time to run some comfort testing, not a full program, but a reasonable cut down program using some rough roads and impact bars. And as usual, there was a loose correlation between positive handling and negative comfort. 
The best of the group in terms of rounding out the harsh imperfections like potholes was naturally the Bridgestone, but the Michelin, Semper and Rotella were up there too. The Goodyear and Hankook and GT were just a little bit below, and then the Conti and Yokohama were the most noticeably firm. I'd only really call the final two uncomfortable tyres though, I'm sure you'd be happy with the rest. Bridgestone had a significant lead in rolling resistance. I knew it would be good given its category, but wow, the best ultra high performance tyre, which was the Goodyear, was 18% behind. That said, given the grip levels of the Goodyear, it's doing an amazing job of blending rolling resistance and grip, as is the Michelin. And finally, here's how I grade the all important curb protection offered by each tyre. For the final results this year, I've tweaked around the score weighting a little from last year as I couldn't do curved aquaplaning and I feel like rolling resistance is even more important than ever given the current climate. In last place was this, the Rotella S Race SU02, which I believe is also sold as a Trackmax tyre and probably some others. Cheap tyres do seem to be getting better every year, but the Rotella did still finish 8th or ninth in every test bar aquaplaning and noise and I'm sure you're all sick of me saying this but the cheapest possible tyres are never the best tyres and this is further proof with extremely long wet braking and low grip and wet handling being the biggest issue. The GT GT Sport S2 finished 8th a fair bit ahead of the Rotella. This tyre subjectively was very nice to drive. Super easy to drive with well weighted steering and excelled in the aquaplaning test something which could really be felt on wet handling. And it was good round dry handling, and it had low noise. It just gave up a bit too much in the braking test. A little bit more braking performance from the next generation of this product, and it will shoot up the order, I'm sure. The Yokohama Advanced Sport V105 might have only finished seventh overall, but it won my heart. It was exceptional during the dry handling test, being one of the nicest tires to drive, and one of the few tires that actually deserves to have the word sport in its name. Obviously, this is an old tyre now, and that shows in wet and rolling resistance tests, but remember, this tyre has already been replaced by the V107. The Semperit Speed Life 3 finishes sixth with one of the best wet performances and fanciest tread designs of the test. Sadly, it was off the pace in the dry and felt more like a premium touring tyre than a sports tyre, so it's one to consider if you're on a budget and wet grip, aquaplaning resistance and comfort are more important to you than outright performance. As I said in wet handling, this tyre reminds me of the Unirail Rain Sport 5 a lot, which is its sister tyre, so that makes sense. Speaking of premium touring tyres is this, the T005 Squishy Boy. It finished in fifth and was certainly interesting having it in this test. And while the subjective differences weren't quite as large as I had assumed, especially between this and some of the more comfort bias ultra high performance tyres such as the Hankook and Semperit, they were definitely there. Where this tyre did excel is rolling resistance and comfort and was okay around wet handling. I was a little bit surprised to see this at the back of the pack for aquaplaning and noise. Looking at other tests, it's in, in its own category. It's usually mid-pack for both. And I'm surprised it didn't do better on wet braking as again, in premium touring tire tests where this tire features, it's normally amongst the very best in wet braking. So that's an interesting differentiate between this and the ultra high performance tires. The Continental non-squishy boy Premium Contact 6 finished fourth and was once again the tire with the best steering response and dynamics. Like last year, the Premium Contact 6 struggled a little bit in wet handling and wasn't super comfortable, but it did very well in dry handling, leading the pack, and was good in dry and wet braking. Not the most comfortable tires on test, but if you're watching this video and wanting an all-out 17-inch tire for handling, it has to be this sort of Yokohama. The Hankook Ventus S1 Evo 3 finishes third, again bolstered by what is quite frankly an insane wet braking result. I'm not sure anyone in the industry has really worked out how they do it so well. This tyre was also very good in dry braking and had low noise, so it's a very safe, capable tyre. However, now having driven this alongside the Bridgestone, it cements my thought it feels more like a touring tyre than a performance tyre, and it's probably more suited to a larger family vehicle than a dynamic sports car. Very capable tyre, lots of grip, just not so dynamic. As with last year's test, we're now at the top two tyres and there's only two tyres left. The new Michelin Pilot Sport 5 and the new Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 6. Once again, and I realise this probably feels a bit scripted, these two are so close on points, a tiny change in the score weighting can invert the results. So I'm taking the easy way out and calling them both winners again, sorry. But I do think they are winners for different reasons and will appeal to different people, so let's dig into this a bit more. Like last year, the Pilot Sport 5 picks up exactly where the Pilot Sport 4 left off by being the tyre that does everything well. It has great dry grip, great wet grip, excellent aquaplaning resistance, it's easy to drive, it has low rolling resistance, it has some of the highest levels of comfort available, and by far the sexiest sidewall. If you're going to buy a tyre based purely on looks, and I'm a thousand percent sure this is going to swing some of you over, Look at it, this is the tyre to have. It is a beautiful sidewall tyre. However, just like the Pilot Sport 4, I feel like 
If you're looking for a tire to bring driving enjoyment to your fingertips or the seat of the pants or wherever you drive enjoyment from, it's gonna leave you a little bit disappointed, just like the Pilot Sport 4 did. The steering response is just a little bit numb, a little bit delayed, and it's not as precise as the most dynamic tires in the test. The Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 6 is an equally as impressive tire. It beats the Michelin in the dry in both time and subjectively with some lovely dynamic steering and has the shortest dry braking of any tire on test. It also essentially matches it in wet braking and wet handling, although the Michelin does have higher aquaplaning resistance. The Goodyear has the lowest noise and lowest rolling resistance of UHP tires on test, although it can't match the Michelin for comfort. All these little performance differences are the results of two of the best tire manufacturers on the planet creating peak tires in their own image of what an ultra high performance tire should be, which means they can both easily be test winners depending on what you want from a tire. Just one final reminder, all of this data on steering response and handling is based around brisk driving. If you use your car just to pootle around town and never go for a drive, you'll be hard pressed to notice the difference in handling and you'll be happy with your steering response of probably any of the tires. Anyway, two amazing tires, two different approaches to ultra high performance, two winners. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to help me out by getting on tirereviews.com and reviewing your own tires. I'd really appreciate it. Follow Tire Reviews on Instagram. I'm now doing stories from testing. Exciting, I know. Any questions, please ask below. And as always, safe motoring.